Welcome back to another installment in the gun experiment series where I am uh, just taking this Glock 21 and turning it into anything and everything uh, that I can find. I mean, it comes standard as a 45 ACP. In my last installment, I turned it into a 9mm. Well, this time we're going up. We're going to go to 10mm. 10mm uh, is a substantially more powerful cartridge than the 45 ACP or the 9mm is. It's actually physically a little bit smaller than the 45 ACP because it's effectively a 40 caliber 10mm bullet. However, it's just a lot more powerful. Now, the conversion from the Glock 21 45 ACP over to 10 millimeters, pretty simple, mainly because the lower part of the gun stays the same. Uh, actually, the Glock 21 frame here is the same as the Glock 20. The only thing really changes is the upper pieces in here. So in order to convert this from 45 ACP into 10 millimeter, I need three parts. First of all, you need appropriate magazine. This is a Glock 20 magazine, which fits perfectly. And this I already had on hand from my conversion to nine millimeter. So if I want to do 40 caliber or 10 millimeter or nine millimeter, this works for all of those. Next, you need an appropriate barrel. This is a Lone Wolf 10 millimeter barrel, uh, stock length. And the, the difference between the 20 and the 21 is really in the slide. The slide is heavier on the 20 and I don't have a slide. You could, you could buy the whole upper, but I'm trying to keep the cost affordable. I mean, check this out. I got this barrel at Midway, Midway USA for 99 bucks and I found a $10 off coupon. So it was only 90 bucks. And in order to compensate for the slide, I'm taking the advice from Mr. Guns and Gear. He did a, a video on how to properly, fully convert a Glock 21 into a 20. And he recommended a 20 pound recoil spring. Uh, the stock spring is 17 pounds. So I got the upgraded recoil spring. So between that and the Lone Wolf stainless steel guide rod, that's 30 bucks, 90 bucks for barrel, $120 total. And I'm taking my Glock 21 into 10 millimeter territory with a simple barrel swap and spring. Here's the parts I use to convert to 10 millimeter. We've got obviously a 10 millimeter magazine from the Glock 20. We have the 10 millimeter barrel from Lone Wolf. And I've got a Lone Wolf stainless steel guide rod with a 20 pound recoil spring on it. I did not change the extractor, the ejector, or any other parts. If you want an extra level of reliability, maybe you want to go ahead and follow all the recommendations that Mr. Guns and Gear has in his video. I found this to work plenty suitable for my testing purposes. The ammo that I'm going to test today is Corbon's DPX in 10 millimeter. I've had really good luck with the Corbon DPX in every, every caliber I've tested, other than 380. 380 was, well, it's a 380. But in everything else, the DPX has been stellar. So I'm going to give the, the 10 millimeter here a chance with the DPX. We're going to use genuine professional ballistic gelatin with and without four layers of denim. So let's find out what I have accomplished here, what I have done by turning this 21 into a 10 millimeter pistol. The 10 millimeter DPXs from the denim showed excellent penetration, exceeding our minimum. The shorter one came in at 12 and three quarters inches and the other one came in at 14 and a quarter. Turn the block over to get the other side where we can see that the bear gel bullets came in at 12 and three quarters and 13 inches. So as far as penetration goes, they did great. But now let's take a look at the initial damage cavities. I don't normally focus on the initial damage cavity very much, but in these 10 millimeters, it's worth looking at because you've got a tremendous amount of destruction going on here lasting a good over seven inches, just about eight inches worth of destruction from initial entry point up to the eight inch mark. Now, generally bullets are expanding around, you know, the one inch in and, and they do some destruction to three or four inches. And that's really not all that relevant uh, because one inch in gel is not necessarily one inch in a body. It doesn't mean that they're doing that damage three, four inches deep in the body. But by the time you get up to seven or eight inches, now you're talking about eight inches of bullet penetration in gel might be enough to hit the vital organs in a human being in an unobstructed shot. So if it's still doing this big, gigantic, cone of destruction eight inches in that's very damaging and that's that's pretty interesting to see and it's it's something i kind of expected from the 10 millimeter and the dpx has sure delivered it so it's 
six inches, roughly six inches into the gel block, we're still seeing not a little pinpoint like some hollow points have been. These things are still cutting a big, nasty hole through the body. So that's, that's really rather impressive. This initial damage cavity that these Corbon DPXs did, you know, like I said, it's what I expected from a 10 millimeter. I'm glad to see that they delivered it. It's nothing to fool around with. Textbook definition of absolute perfection. Look at these gigantic, fully expanded, perfect bullets. This is exactly what I would want to see. These are, well, I'm going to say it again. They're perfect. The two from the bear are totally perfect. From the denim, we got one that's absolutely ideal. And this one looks like it's just a little bit smaller. So it probably hit harder and the pedals bent back a little bit further. And as a result, these three all average right around 13 inches, 12 and three quarter to 13 inches. This one went a little bit further to 14. I guess if I had any of the minorest of complaints, I would like to have seen these all travel an extra inch or two, just, just a little further past the minimum. But they all easily exceeded the minimum, and I'm sure that's pretty much exactly where Corbon designed them to hit, so I have no complaints. I think these are wonderful performing bullets. All right, wrap up. Highly successful. I love the fact that I have upgraded the power in the gun here with such a simple change. The only complaint I really have about it is this lone wolf barrel has no indication on the barrel at all what caliber it is where it's visible it actually does have an indication on the barrel here so i guess when you're assembling the gun you can know that you've got the 10 millimeter but once it's built up you can't tell at a glance and if you're gonna do something like this where you're experimenting with multiple calibers you want to keep it clear so i may get this engraved or something to know for a fact that when the 10 millimeter is in there as far as the dpx goes uh utter perfection very very happy with it fantastic round and when i use this gun as a uh, defensive weapon uh, the dpx is definitely gonna be one of my recommended loads i will try other loads with it in future videos but uh so far if you got a glock 20 the dpx is a superb performer very happy with that Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. Stay tuned because there will be more conversions coming up. Uh, I have many more caliber conversions in mind for this. And uh, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified when the next videos are posted.